Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Youssef. In a message on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahraini journalism and media for their noble goal of spreading awareness and knowledge and being partners in the National March for Continuing Development. His Majesty stated that Bahrain celebrates with the international community the 30th anniversary of the United Nations General Assembly's allocation of May 3rd as World Press Freedom Day under the theme Building a Future Based on Rights, Freedom of the Press is the Center of Human Rights. To reiterate pride in the national press and media who carry the duty of protecting the integrity of words with objectivity, credibility and professionalism. With modern democracy and an advanced constitutional and legal system that guarantees mechanisms for free expression of opinion responsibly, safely and independently. His Majesty added that guarantees of freedom of the press and human rights in Bahrain were paralleled in the National Action Charter and the Constitution as foundations for the progress and development of society and efforts have continued to develop the legislative, regulatory and institutional aspects to strengthen values and principles. On one hand, the gains of freedom of the national press have increased to perform its role professionally and responsibly, and on the other hand, the system concerned with human rights has developed comprehensively to preserve human dignity in all respects. His Majesty stated that with the multiple press and media tools in the world nowadays, the importance of focusing on truth and addressing topics is increasing as receiving correct and accurate information is the right of the receiver and the duty of all journalists. He stressed the importance of integrating the concept of freedom and the press with combating misinformation for its devastating impact on societies, institutions, democracy and human rights and for its role in creating sedition and disrupting development efforts. His Majesty added that hate speech in all its types is a form of misinformation that harms human rights and dignity. He affirmed the importance of reaching a global formula to criminalize all hate speech. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities in their endeavor to develop legislation and systems to support freedom of expression and press in Bahrain and enhance Bahrain's press gains. His Majesty hailed the role of the Ministry of Information in fulfilling its duty professionally and competently in providing the legislative and organizational atmosphere for the prosperity of press and media freedoms, developing visual, visual audio and e-media, maintaining Bahrain national identity and highlighting its rich heritage as well as investing in national talents and raising Bahrain's status as a cultural center. His Majesty also commended its continuous contributions to supporting development and democratic support and its keenness along with Bahrain Journalists Association and the national media on developing press and media and laying the foundations for free, fair and objective speech, instilling the concepts of loyalty and belonging to the homeland and protecting the right to knowledge. His Majesty wished the Kingdom Development and Growth and the Arab and Islamic Nations as well as the world security and peace and further promotion of human rights, principles and sustainable development. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the international community in celebrating World Press Freedom Day, which falls on the 3rd of May every year. More on this report. Based on the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attaches to the press and journalists and the continuous support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahrain joins the international community in celebrating World Press Freedom Day. Continuous support given by the leadership and government of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the press strengthened its influence as an active and important partner in the comprehensive development process within the framework of what is in line with the democratic development in the Kingdom and respects the principles of freedoms, laws and institutions. An active role and a noble message presented by the press and the Kingdom of Bahrain, which contributed to highlighting civilizational progress and achievement in various fields, and showed an honorable commitment to national constants, and became the voice that expresses the aspirations of the country and its citizens. The pioneering steps taken by the Bahraini press contributed to the progress of the country and conveyed the development witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain to the world. The pioneering steps taken by the Bahraini press contributed to the progress of the country and conveyed the development witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain to the world through the adherence to the noble ethics of this profession and its important role. 
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the final match of the Khalid bin Hamad Gold Generation League for basketball, which was held between Al Ahli and Sitra clubs. GSA Vice President, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Asker, and president of the Bahrain Basketball Association, Captain Walid Al Alawi, in addition to a number of attendees, were also present. On the occasion, His Highness affirmed the inv that investing in promising sports talents and paying attention to the base is a winning bet to continue the path of success and gains for Bahraini sports. His Highness congratulated the Ahli team after winning the title, defeating Sitra 76-46 in the final match, praising the outstanding level presented by the champion team, wishing the runner-up success in the next edition. His Highness also stressed that the competition contributed to raising awareness of the importance of supporting and sponsoring age group teams as they constitute the solid foundation for sports development. He lauded the levels presented by the players of the two teams that reflect future talents to represent the national teams, noting the vital role played by clubs and the Bahrain Basketball Association in choosing the best talents for the national teams. His Highness wished the Bahraini basketball continued progress and success. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the final match of the 47th Crown Prince Volleyball Cup held between Dar Chleib Club and Al Ahli Club at the Isa bin Rashid Volleyball Hall in Rafah. His Highness presented the cup to Dar Chleib Club following their victory over Al Ahli Club by three sets to one. He commended the performance of both teams during the game and their advanced sportsmanship. He highlighted the Bahrain Volleyball Association's support for the sport and organizing the tournament. His Highness congratulated the board members of the winning club and their fans on the victory, noting the role of these achievements along with the achievements of other Bahraini clubs in developing the sport. His Highness awarded the cup and medals for members of the winning team and awarded medals to the runner-ups.
The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed Bin Dana, addressed the opening ceremony of the National Adaptation Plan Implementation Workshop. Dr. Bin Dana stressed the importance of sharing the responsibility of achieving climate security and keeping pace with global efforts to reduce emissions, calling for concerted international and national efforts to adapt to climate changes and build on previous achievements to ensure a better global environmental future. The Minister praised the wide participation in the workshop, which included over 150 participants, experts and speakers representing over 80 countries who took part in the event in person or remotely. He stated that the workshop shed light on the exchange of knowledge and experiences gained from policymakers and workers in the field of national adaptation plans. The work of the second edition of the Conference of Freedom of Religion and Belief has been launched, which is being held in cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the European Union, with the participation of elite policy and decision makers from both sides. More in this report. Continued joint dialogue and cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the European Union, which is strengthened through the Freedom of Religion and Belief Conference, which comes in its second edition to complete its course and constructive dialogue on freedom of religion and belief and to present models and lessons learned from the Bahraini experience and the European experience, which brought together science, knowledge and peace. I'm very glad to be part of this initiative and very grateful to the King Hamad Global Center for uh, giving me the opportunity to share Italy's, Italy's experience in the promotion of freedom of religion or belief and interfaith dialogue. It's a priority for us that is having new impetus under the leadership of uh, our foreign minister Antonio Tajani and uh, I would like to seize this opportunity to commend Bahrain's uh, long-standing commitment to promote uh, religious pluralism and diversity both domestically at, and at the international level. This conference, which is organized by the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain, discusses in a transparent manner all global challenges and issues of freedom of religion and belief and comes to play the role of civil society in order to contribute to the dissemination of human values and support regional and international efforts to consolidate the values of moderation and reject hatred, violence and extremism. So I think the, the present conference, the present meeting is a great chance for collaboration between nations and, and religions and basically exchanging ideas on how to go forward in this like challenging and ever-changing uh, world. What I've learned the most is seeing the peaceful coexistence that exists here in Bahrain and really seeing the people and talking to them, especially at the expo just now, that everyone deeply lives this and believes this and I think it's something to learn from. Um, so I'm really grateful for the opportunity for us to, as Europeans to come and see this and also really learn what it means to live with uh, interfaith and also peaceful coexistence and also knowing that like we can live together in peace. The efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain continue to convey its civilized message to the world as a leading model in the field of respect for freedoms and rights. Hosting this conference confirms the position and good reputation that the Kingdom has gained and the unique experience it possesses in the field of protecting religious freedoms and respecting religious, intellectual and cultural diversity in the world. The Ministry of Tourism and Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority participated in the 30th edition of the Arabian Travel Market, which kicked off in Dubai under the slogan, Achieving Zero Emissions. More in this report. With the participation of the Ministry of Tourism and Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, the 30th edition of the Arabian Travel Market Exhibition was launched at the Dubai World Trade Center in the presence of 23 Bahraini companies, showcasing the most prominent tourist destinations and historical monuments. The Kingdom of Bahrain Pavilion reviewed the most prominent tourism companies, resorts and hotels that highlight the Kingdom's landmarks. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, also participated in a panel discussion entitled The Future of Travel in the GCC Countries, where she discussed the importance of joint promotion among the GCC countries as a single tourist destination to attract the largest possible number of international tourists. She also emphasized the accelerating growth of the tourism sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The exhibition is considered one of the most important international exhibitions in the travel and tourism sector as it reviews the most prominent trends in the development of travel and provides opportunities to chart the future of sustainable tourism and exchange knowledge.
The National Initiative for Agricultural Development signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Arabian Gulf University to prepare a study on the effect of trees and shrubs on carbon sequestration in Bahrain as part of the National Afforestation Campaign for Evergreen. The MOU is a complementary to NIAD's efforts to plant 140,000 trees and 110,000 mangrove shrubs to continue to reducing carbon emissions. NIAD Secretary General Sheikh Hamarab bint Isa Al Khalifa said the study is aligned with NIAD's approach to strengthen community partnership, encourage scientists research support efforts to protect the environment and achieve sustainable development. The acting president of AGU, Dr. Abdurrahman Ismail, said the MOU boosts cooperation between AGU and NIAD and contributed to national efforts to protect the environment and mitigate climate change. In a statement to the News Center, the president of the 77th United Nations General Assembly, Chaba Koroshi, hailed the Kingdom of Bahrain for being one of the most constructive actors in the UNGA and noted its large influence because of its diplomacy and approach. More on this report. While speaking about the importance of his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, which is the first visit to the Middle East, the current president of the United Nations General Assembly, Chaba Koroshi, said that his visit aims to build alliances and cooperation with the Kingdom and noted the importance of such an endeavor at a time when the world is facing its most difficult crisis in 70 years. The United Nations consists of 193 countries, smaller, bigger ones, medium-sized mid, medium ones, once uh, Bahrain belongs to the relatively small countries, but belongs to ro those relatively small countries who have large influence because of their diplomacy and because of their approach, how to handle certain issues, how to handle certain, uh, certain crises. It is one of the reasons Bahrain is a regional hub uh, for the United Nations. And Bahrain is a very generous country. Uh, generously supporting humanitarian efforts and all, as I, uh, as I was told by His Majesty the Queen, all the activities, humanitarian activities of Bahrain that are conducted abroad are done with the cooperation and via the United Nations, uh, United Nations agencies. So uh, Bahrain is a valued, uh, and, uh, uh, valued and very highly cherished partner of the United Nations. During the meeting, the president expressed his appreciation for the progress made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in achieving the goals of sustainable development. I was the co-chair of the United Nations negotiations many years ago that produced the sustainable development goals. When I gathered down the results uh, of the long negotiations that produced the 17 goals, I was very hopeful because we felt that it is something serious mm -hmm. for the whole humanity, for the future. But I had still some doubts. How will it come down to different countries, to schools, municipalities, mm -hmm. companies, uh, even universities and, and, and uh, uh, scientific institutions? Uh, and I was very positively surprised in the last couple of years and I'm absolutely positively surprised when I see that in Bahrain, you are one of those countries, one of the first countries who even have a ministry uh, for sustainable development. The president indicated that his visit includes a vision of tolerance and coexistence between all religions and sects in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Bahrain is one of the most constructive actors, constructive actors in the United Nations General Assembly. So the purpose of my visit here to find alliances, to find cooperations with the government and with the king of uh, his, uh, his majesty, the king of, uh, of Bahrain, uh, to seek where we can help member states uh, to weather the uh, current crisis, where we can help member states to progress on the sustainability transformation and to get prepared for the challenges that are waiting further down on the road. My other purpose for coming here was to see by my eyes what I saw from the books and different reports that it is possible, even in a small country where various, various diverse communities, be them religious or ethnic communities, can live, work and thrive together. The president praised the Kingdom of Bahrain's experience in supporting the youth and empowering women in all societies. 
I uh, wanted to meet young uh, Bahraini diplomats, the future leaders, to discuss with them how they feel this world, how are they getting prepared for this world, and how uh, their knowledge uh, is being up to date uh, for the challenges of the, uh, of the tomorrow. At the end of the meeting, the President praised the countries that are making efforts and shouldering responsibility to address these issues, including the Kingdom of Bahrain, expressing his appreciation and gratitude for their endeavors for the sake of humanity.